special podcast. I am your host, Nomi Senzo. Today we play a silver quilt. Comics. Comics. Rawr. Oh no. Do, do I need to bring in some, what you call this, Phoenix Down? It doesn't work with zombies. That would just destroy them. Oh, they're Phoenix true. Down. True that. You haven't played Final Fantasy! Oh no, I did. And the first boss that you meet in the train at Balam, not Balam, in whatever place that is, tough boss, a zombie, attacks you and poisons you. Pro tip, Phoenix down him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> one Phoenix down and I'm dead. What? <laughs> yeah. I love the Spoonie One's uh, review of Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> uh, back, I missed the Spoonie One. Yeah, back when he was sane. Anyway, let us not dwell. True, 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 true. So anyway, in today's episode of the... <laughs> no, no, uh, in today's episode, we will be reviewing the My Little Pony Legends of Magic issue number 6. In this issue, Sunburst reads about the legend of Mage Meadowbrook and the deceased town of Meridiana. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, that, that, that's how you say it, I guess. Meridian. Mer- Meridian. All oh, right. Okay. I see what you did. Ah, uh, puns. Nice. But hey. Yes, it's so wonderful. <laughs> yes. But anywho, before we head in, uh, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think of said story? Well, this one's kind of funny. When I first read it and even wrote a review for it, I enjoyed it, but it was less character driven because I felt Mage Meadowbrook was on her own and could really do well with a foil. But there was a tweet from author Jeremy Wheatley who pointed out that he wanted to present a healer as more physical, as more uh, acrobatic, and not the standard hide in the back line, don't let anyone mess with your white mage mentality. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So it's a little bit of both. I find it Great charm in terms of physicality and energy. Maybe doesn't expose her character as well as, say, um, there was a parallel issue in the main IDW line that talked about how she cured a town over the objections of a very uh, superstitious mayor, which I think said more about Mage Meadowbrook there. Yeah, I remember that one. That that comic was awesome. Like, If I remember right, this was during the time where Things were topsy turvy upside down with the early release that they're trying to do with this one. Because uh, if I remember right, the first appearance of Mage Meadowbrooks to the world was the IDW mainline comic, right? Well, technically, the very first, at least, mention of her was back in the season five premiere. Starlight claimed her staff of equalizing, which turned out to be a branch, she claimed it was made by Mage Meadowbrook, which at the time meant nothing. Now suddenly, she's an earth pony? What? I know, I know, that's confusing. But uh, I, I think, if I remember right, like, first appearance, first mentioned, whatever it is, was the mainline comics. And that there was confusing as heck, because if, if you remember right, we suddenly see Cattail, and, okay, who's this character here? Why are, why are we invested in this character here? Oh, yes, they, uh, the comic came out before the episode. So we were all very confused. Yeah, and this is even in um, going on track with what Hasbro wants with its uh, Discovery release. So, yeah, that was confusing. Did this episode got leaked out in other countries? No, I, I don't think it did. No, wait, that's not true either. It, I first saw it in Russian. Yeah, but still, uh, timing didn't came out right. Like, I think the comic was out before then too. Yeah. Yeah, so the timing, I'm sorry to say that the timing in season six was very, very, very messed up. Yeah, I think it was Thanks. seven, actually. Is it seven? Man, I no, 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 season six. Yeah, more. six, six, six. My bad. Okay, okay. So I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. You're you're crazy. Especially oh. you, Ghost of Napa. <laughs> hey. So, anyway, uh, yeah. Um, anything else to add, Silver? Mm, nope, we'll cover the rest as we go. All right. As for me, this book, I like it. I, I like the action scene. I like how Mage is acrobatic and whatnot. And like this kind of 
uh, gives a new spin on Mage's character because when we when I first read the mainline comics for this one and saw that hey uh she's kind of a quiet type of pony more thinking and more doing stuff behind the scenes and whatnot and in this comic she's up front she's there she's jumping around ninja style so yay much awesomeness and as for this comic book issue here I like it like this the whole scenario with the story was really fun but let's get into it so if you have not read this comic yet pause here welcome back i hope you enjoy the book so anyway let's head right into it we start off with our well good friends starlight glimmer and sunburst about to head to the train station like sun glim glam here is helping Sunburst pack up for the train ride to the Crystal Empire. It seems that Sunburst has been in Canterlot for a while now, and he has to go back to the Crystal Empire because probably Flurryheart is, well, causing a bit of problem for Cadence. Hmm? She's he, she's probably transformed half the staff into potted plants. She's just like her aunt. Oh, no. Oh, no. But still, um, Grim Glam here is going to miss... Sunburst because if he's in Cantalot, it will be much easier for her to visit him and stuff. Yeah, still, long story short, um, Star Sunburst have to go back because of work obligation and yeah, he just have to go back. And uh, when trying to carry uh, his bag, Glim Glam felt that it was really heavy and the reason why it's heavy is because Sunburst here took every book in Star Swirl's library. And the reason why is because he wants to be first in discovering some things that Twilight would have discovered before him. So he's trying to steal the line like... Hey. Well, everyone wants to have that moment of accomplishment. And I like how, how both Starlight and Sunburst agree. Sometimes you have to... It, it's natural to want to do something first. True so, that. you know, it's not... It's not just honest. And they're honest about their motives. Although I will miss that uh, Starlight, we had a little bit of shipping with Starlight saying, oh, now read to me like one of your French mares. <laughs> Yee. But anywho. Yee, this is quite wonderful. <laughs> but anywho, once that's done, uh, all the packing, uh, Sunburst here just picks up a book and said book is, oh, give me a second, I need to zoom in on this one. And it says, Mage Meadowbrook and the Abandoned City. Oh my, it feels like an Resident Evil story comic book. Ooh. You almost became a mage sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Twilight is our old friend. <laughs> What's this? Jill, is that you? Mage Meadowbrook, is that you? Oh my goodness. Much fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Resident Evil. So, anywho. Um, Sunburst picks up a book and starts reading it. And I'm just going to tell the audience at home that this is going to be a speedy review because it's kind of straightforward. It's a lot of action. And for us to relay the adventure back again would kind of um, water down the experience of reading it. We'll just highlight scenes that are needed for the review. Agree, Silva? I agree. Although I'll just say in general, anytime uh, Mage Meadowbrook does uh, some sort of ninja healing flips, Dr. McNinja is off of the audience going, Oh, that's my pony! <laughs> All right, then. So, anywho, uh, our introduction to Mage Meadowbrook here is uh, telling the audience that she is a healer. She is a miracle worker. She went from city to city, curing the incurable, uh, seeing the unseeable. Row, row, fight the power. Who the hell do you think I am? I'm Mage Meadowbrook. <laughs> I, my medicine will pierce the heavens. <laughs> but anywho, Mage here cures a pony who is kind of feeling under the weather. You could say that he's not feeling blue enough. He's like a double D, double D. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. So, anywho, he's Periwinkle. Ah, Periwinkle the pony. No. Periwinkle the pony. I like that. But he doesn't want to be Periwinkle. That's spectralist. Uh, uh, but still. But still. So, um, the story here says that Mage travels a lot 
and upon her travel she hears and stuff so when you do a lot of travel you spend a lot of supplies on food and whatnot so a uh, mage just says okay you know what um i'm going to go to the nearest town tomorrow and stock on supplies yay and today is a clear good day what could go wrong famous last words because the next page or the next panel it starts raining and she needs to run away run away run away and I like that she's like, ah, oh, fiddlesticks, which in this world might actually be profanity. Oh, hush, fiddles. I mean, well, th- peeved. <gasps> she said peeved. Oh, How could oh, she? Goodness. Oh, like, I think Fluttershy don't give a flying feather. Oh, she doesn't give a flying feather. Why is Fluttershy the potty mouth of the group? Silver, I'll say this, it's always the quiet ones. Well, then Derpy should be the uh, most violent and profane of them all. Silver, first rule of muffins, we do not talk about her anger issues. Oh, you're right. Every day the town teeters on a massacre. Yeah. That's why she and the doctor go on an adventure to save the town. So, (laughs) yes. So, so, anywho, upon arriving to the town of Mer... Mer... um, What was the pun again? Mer- Meridian. Meridian, yes. <laughs> uh, upon arriving to the town of Meridian, it's a ghost town and nobody's there. And yeah, uh, Mage feels creeped out by this. So, you know what? It's all okay. It's, it's all cool because where is the best place to look for people? It's in the Holiday Inn. Yay. I'm going to contest that. Also, you just plugged Holiday in Mark Norman. How could you? Okay, I won't then. Uh, so should, should I plug the uh, what you call this Trump Tower? <laughs> no, no. Oh, Norman, getting a little edgy. <laughs> I I'm not feeling too well. The the cough is kicking in. Uh. Oh, ne- well now now somewhere he's like I love Norman Sanzo. He's fantastic, excellent golfer. Oh, if you really like me that much, give me a visa. Gosh dang it. Norman says it was also a bad hombre. <laughs> what, what? Oh, anywho. Um, as Mitch enters the inn, it's dark. There's nobody in there. You know, because I- I'm guessing that uh, Electric City doesn't really exist. So Mitch has to take a lamp from her caravan. And once she lights up the inn... Uh, things are rather doom and gloom. I would say she just entered into a thriller. A thriller night. I can see Mage leading these in a dance. Oh, hey, Silva, what would happen if your uh, bar dabbles in necromancy? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I'm just noticing the thriller music sheet. That's why I'm making this joke. <laughs> or or maybe they uh they use Worcestershire sauce. Oh no. And that resurrects the dead. Oh no. So anywho, uh Mage notices the zombies and uh she freaks out and uh, alerting the zombies to her presence. Oh no. So yeah, um Mage gets chased around town and it's not good. It's not good. So, uh, the only way to kind of save herself from this chaos is to get her supplies. But her supplies are in her caravan near the inn. But you know what? She is a ninja. A sneaky sneaky ninja. So, she just jumps around and gets to her caravan without even getting noticed. Until that one zombie. Again, looking at uh, Dr. McNinja, what is it? The inverse numbers principle. One zombie is a huge threat. A horde is a bunch of disposable fodder. <laughs> so true. So true. But still, um, Mage sure uh, climbs up to her caravan and uses a, I don't know, no idea, owning or whatever you call it, as a trampoline and, yay, escape to safety. So she goes into the building and out the building to the back and... There's that one zombie. Yep, yep. Thinking that she kind of misled the zombies or outwitted the zombies until one caught her from behind 
and she's running away and I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, Seppi mentioned that uh, Mage Shear running looks like a Sailor Moon panel. Yay. And I have to say, it does. Nadia! <laughs> oh, with, bird, uh, with toast in my mouth and stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Mage runs to a barn, I think to the outskirts of town, and discovers that, oh, no, uh, there's frogs in here. That's not good. And it's infecting the food supply. You know what? This reminds me of the um magic uh, what was it again my micro or friends forever s- series we have Zakura and spike ah yes fi- diagnosing the problem mm-hmm. where although why all the frogs are getting into the oats do frogs eat oats no i think they're just there because it's the <coughs> rainy season and the frogs just kind of jump places and stuff yeah, th- these frogs are just acting weird because they usually don't eat the oats, but somehow this one does. And yeah, uh, Meishir says she can fix the problem and brews up. With, sorry. With, well, she says she can fix the problem with the most terrifying face ever. I mean, you can tell the knight's hat worn on her with that expression. <laughs> She's. I can fix this. <laughs> <laughs> she just has, what you would call this, a rough day. So. She brews up a potion and put on her mask. So you know when she puts on her mask, it's serious time. Although it, I thought she left her mask at the uh, cart because it was hanging on the side there. True that. Uh, let me see. Let me double check just to make sure. Um, Meanwhile, yeah. while you do that, I will comment on the remarkable image of her squeezing a frog <laughs> for her potion. Oh, no. That frog... Is just be glad there was not an SPCA back then. Oh no, yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, she did not bring her mask along. I'm just gonna say that it's magic. <laughs> I'm a magic mask. Yep, yep. So anywho, um, Mage created her potion, finished her potion, and invites the zombie to the barn and. After the zombie came comes in, she splashes one zombie with the potion. And the zombie turns back to normal and says, uh, Where am I? Who's there? And like a cool ninja, Meadowbrook says, Don't worry, I'm the cure for what ails you. Yeah, ninja. And she just says... But, but she has to check and make sure that actually sounded cool. Yeah. And you know... It needed a little work. I, I think the, the pony gives her good feedback. I'm the remedy. Because the remedy is the experience. This is strange enough new play on words. Yeah, yeah. But still, uh, here is where I am going to fast forward a bit because there is a lot of jumping action scene. Like a lot of spring bottles. Like just imagine John Wick, but instead of guns, it's bottles. Yeah, much fun. And the town is saved once again by Mage Meadowbrook and her potion. Yay. And funky ninja music. Dong, 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 dong. Master Ninja theme song. Master Ninja theme song. Yeah. But yeah, um, they have a feast in honor of Mage Meadowbrook curing them. And since the, which you call this, food supply was tainted, they have no feast. Uh-huh. It's funny because they're going to starve. It's funny because they're doomed. <laughs> Mage Meadowbrook brought them back only for their death. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Sunburst comments by saying, You know, I was with it until the healer suddenly turned into a ninja at the end there. I don't think that Star Swole really knows what a healer is. And yeah, a class change all of a sudden, that's not logical. Come on, Star Swole. Know your D&D lore. Well, either way. I mean, you, you know, I, I like the idea, idea of a ninja healer. But again, I watch, I read Dr. McNinja. <laughs> Please do explain to us what is Dr. McNinja. Oh, you, you don't know the wonders? This was a comic produced uh, by a very talented artist detailing the life of a doctor who was also part of the McNinja clan. <laughs> Irish ninjas. Oh, wow. The last, the last ninjas in the world, in fact. And so it is him going against, uh, raptor riding Mexicans. <laughs> and let's see here, uh, a mobster called, who's part lobster, therefore the, lo- the lobster, you know, 
kind of like mobster, Dracula, and most of all, King Radical, the most radical man in the world, who's also a crime lord. Oh my goodness. That, that does not sound to, real. Oh, it's real. It's real. Oh, oh, you, you doubt me. No, you no. doubt me. Well, <laughs> everything you just mentioned there is just too, too pure. It's just pure awesome. Nothing like that could be real. And he, uh, he also does face zombies where he must activate the town's zombie defense system, which is basically give everyone spacesuits so they can't get bitten. <laughs> oh my goodness. But still, we're, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So. But that same, but that same system enables, uh, King Radical to turn the town into one giant robot. So, yeah, you need to read this comic. It's fun. It's I'll good. Try. And yes, he would approve of Mage Meadowbrook. I'll try. I'll try. But anyway, um, the train suddenly comes to a screeding halt. And oh no, all of Sunburst's stuff are scattered everywhere. And he noticed a book. And this book has Star Swirl's cutie mark, officially, by the way. And it reveals something. And what was it again? The best elements within can only spread light and virtue. And I know ponies who represent them all. Strength, bravery, healing, beauty, hope, and sorcery. Oh, no. And this is where things turn or things come to a really, really interesting start. And also contradiction. It's a little different from what we... Uh... From what we see in the show. But the, the feeling is still there. It's the part that triggers the season end finale. Yep, yep. And yet, even though they leave on the cliffhanger of, uh, I need to talk to Twilight Sparkle, we never see him talk to Twilight Sparkle in the comics. Yep. Oh, in the show, too. So there you go. Yep. And with that, the comic ends. So, Silver, discussions. So, I kind of like this comic. Like, the action scenes here are awesome. Like, that feeling of movement is kinetically there. And uh, who did this comic, by the way? I need to double check. Uh, was it Heather Breckle? No, no, Heather Breckle did the color. Uh, uh, Brenda it's Hickey. Brenda Hickey. Yeah. And like I always mentioned before, Brenda and Hickey does, uh, has this style or with her that when it does action scenes, she's really good at it. Yes, indeed. And I, too, thoroughly enjoy this. Although... I didn't really get to talk about the idea of a foil, which is something I originally critiqued. I found that the Legends of Magic are at their best when they have, when they have a foil to stand against them. It was Young Luna for Mistmane. It was the cowardly, uh, members of the Mighty Helm for Rockhoof. Flash Magnus had his, uh, his commanding officer. Mm -hmm. If Mage encountered one uninfected member of the town, who was freaking out and just couldn't imagine what was going on. I feel like that would enhance her deductive reasoning, which is why I point to the main line where she had a very superstitious and somewhat narrow-minded uh, mayor that she had to overcome in order to treat the well. True that, true that. But here's my counter-argument with that one, because uh, we already got that scenario there. So if we if they would do that here again, it will be kind of repeating the same thing again. They're playing devs as an advocate, by the way. We already seen um, her dealing with that in the mainline story and if you repeat that here, it's going to be redundant. And we got her introduction in the series proper, so I think this one shows what she can really do. Well, I agree with that, but at the same time, when you ma if you have to make the argument, well, we already did it in a mini story. It's like, well, then didn't you kind of undermine your main story by blowing um, the character-driven tale on a throwaway or a distraction? I do not know if this really works the way they think it would work. What if you flipped them? What if it was this was the um, the tale of purifying the well and the mini story? with Cattail and company was the ninja frog treatment, which just sounds awesome no matter how I say true it. That, true that. Put a ninja in front of anything and it sounds cooler. Yeah. Ninja dentist. A ninja dog. Ninja delivery man. Ninja dog. Oh my God. Scooby death. I know. And a ninja chair. Could you just imagine that? Oh, a ninja chair. You don't, you can't sit on it because you never know where it really is. So true. And yet when you least expect it, maximum comfort. <laughs> yes, yes. But, Overall, like to me personally, I think 
this comic here works well as it is. If you change it, like if you uh, put the... Okay, let's just say you put this comic here in the main line and the main line into this comic here. It could have worked, but I feel like... You know what? I got no idea, man. Like, it could work, but because of how the narrative is being told, it will be very confusing because the story here is being told by our narr narrator, Sunburst. So if he would just to tell the story, you know what? It's just confusing no matter how you spin it. It is, but it's it's a case of, well, they were trying very hard to tie into the show, to tie into the episodes, to tie the comics, and sometimes it was either redundant or spoilery or just a bit of a brouhaha. True, true. But in the end, in the end, I felt like, um, it flushes out Mage Meadowbrook story. And by the way, um, Somnambula didn't have a foil. Somnambula, she did though. She had the panicking townsfolk that were already in the snake's belly, as well as the prince. Mm, really? I, I don't in, in feel it, that way. I mean, it, it wasn't really a foil to her character. I mean, I felt like Somnambula had just her positivity to rely on and i don't know I, I don't see anyone challenging her oh i i saw it in the prince when he was like why are you not panicking there's a snake eating my home <laughs> will panicking help me fix the problem <laughs> what see that that's what i mean by a foil uh, all right yeah. that's still probably probably but uh let's see anything else to point out for this comic here I don't know if I could count the zombies as a foil. As a blah. Well, I disagree with your view. Arrah. Well, there's no need for that language. Yeah, I mean, those zombies are just, well, all they want to do is eat your brains. It's not like they want to eat your eyes. Actually, it's never really stated that they want to eat her brains either. Yeah, tr true, true. I mean, uh, well, um, mm, uh, I, I'm trying to do a reference to a Jonathan Colton song, but I can't remember the lyrics. Re Really, I'm thinking of an Ask a Ninja song, the a zombie snowman. Kid brains, tra la 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 la. Kid brains, tra la 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 la. It's more catchy when he does it. <laughs> Let's see here, a very ninja Christmas. Oh boy! See, we're talking a lot about ninjas because they had crazy cool ninja. Yeah, it's like the moves. I mean, look at uh, Mitch moves. Like, it's really awesome. And I could totally see why Rockcliffe would fall for her in later issues. Yeah. So, anywho, um, I don't think there's anything else to um, highlight or talk about. Brenda Hickey's art is awesome, as always. And the next chapter here, if I'm not mistaken, um, the one coming after this is being drawn by somebody else, right? Yeah, it's being drawn by Tony Fleece. Tony yeah. Fleece. Yeez. So they both do a wonderful job. Totally, totally. So, anywho, um, if there's nothing else, I think we should go for final thoughts. Yes, let's go for final thoughts. Yep, so what do you think, Silva? Well, I won't hold this as my favorite because I like character-driven stories in My Little Pony, and this one is more action. The characterization for Mage Meadowbrook is her intuitive uh, ability to find the source of a problem and then to figure out how to treat it. But then also to undermine your expectations of a healer by making her a super cool ninja flying healer. <laughs> Who's defending the white mage? I am the defense and the nah. white mage. Nah, man, nah. In Temple of Nuvus at point B, when all your crew members are fighting and they're dead, Mercy just comes out from spawn and press Q and they won. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's the good old days. Now it's... Yeah. Now it's all Valkyrie. I, I, heroes never die, and I'm flying around better than Farah, and I can't kill her because I like to play Doomfist. Uh, Doom is getting nerfed. Oh, he has been nerfed. Yeah, no, I mean, what? Okay, that's a rant for a whole other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, boys. Oh, boys. But let's see. Um, What else? Yeah. Mage Meadowbrook. Awesome, awesome character. Anything else to add? Nope. Pretty awesome all around. True that, true that. So anyway, as for me, I like this episode. This <laughs> I like this comic. This comic is a lot of fun. Um it shows that it shows how Mage survived all this time. Like her 
uh, which we call this ninja skills are put to the test and it shows why she's the healer of the group her mobility her smarts and wise like she knows what she's doing good times uh -huh. and also gives a certain personality to her characteristics like i mentioned before most of the show don't really portray our characters here that much and having the comics here flush out their characters is much awesomeness and by the way i have to point something out here just because i recently heard ellie ray the voice of miss main talk about it and there was a question being asked to her if she read or she know about the idw comic featuring miss main and she said yes and she loved the comic well yeah because that was a really good tale and it featured adorable luna what's not to love i know i know answer me what is not to love i know and uh, you know what i'll talk about it later day when we have nothing to talk about or maybe when we talk to her or something like that. I don't know. It's one of those possibilities. Bah. So, um, shall we end this? Because i got nothing more to add. Like, I, I like this. Go, go read it. Go read it. Well, I, I have one thing to add, but it's what we'll be reviewing next time. Oh. What will be... The, but, 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 what next? <laughs> well, tis the season to be reviewing. Fa la 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 la. Uh -huh. So, how about we check in with the Hearthswarming Club? Oh, that sounds like an interesting club. Well, one can only hope as we get to see how they celebrate holidays in other cultures and how Gallus became a fandom favorite character in one go. Oh, yeah. That, that is just awesome. Like, oh, I will poor baby Griffin. Oh, oh did you, I just want to put, pinch his little cheeks. I know. I know. Yep. So we'll be reviewing that. Yep, yep. And by the way, Silver, uh, if I'm counting this right, probably this episode, oh, sorry, uh, probably that episode with Gallus will be coming out on the 20th of December. So I think it's the perfect time. Yeah. Ah, serendipitous. I know. So yeah, uh, it'll be according to plan. No, no, no. The plan is so lame. It'll be according to Kikaku. I'll take your word for it. Uh, you, you didn't watch Death Note. Is that what they say? Yeah, it's kind Kekaku? of Kekaku? Yeah, Kekaku in Japanese is plan. Oh, God. Yeah, so well, yeah. No, I, uh, that almost sounds like a curse word or a violent attack. <laughs> nah, but anyway, if you have any questions, seriously, with my sanity and whatnot, concerns for my sanity, or suggestions for me doing not lame jokes for the show or myself, you can contact us at individualgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. Uh, the Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. That is also the, what I use on Deviant Art, and for uh, on YouTube, or you can just do a search for After the Fact. You can also find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday, where I post a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Do check it out, guys, because it's one of those awesome reviews that he posts up really fast like and i even question how does silver do it the comic just released today you're a ninja or something oh i'll never tell <laughs> believe it that's the by all <laughs> all right so anyway also please subscribe and rate us on itunes youtube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and station radio and also like our facebook page you can also catch us on ponyvalive.com links are in the show notes also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. It's what you're hearing right now, but mobile. Yay! If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. We have every support you get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion Podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Master of Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Zizil Vakril. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS Show. See ya! Bye! All we want to do is beat your brain. We're not unreasonable. I
I mean, no one's going to eat your lines. What? Why not? I hear they're high in protein. I don't know. We Asians love to eat lines. <laughs> oh, that might explain the latest Common Rider Amazons. <laughs> <laughs>